Hallelujah. It's good to be here again. Thanks for some nice encouraging words, Logan. Thank God God is alive. Amen. He is our strength. He is our salvation. Yes. We don't have to fear anything. Amen. He is a uh, he can be trusted. Yes. Amen. Yeah. He is always his grace mm -hmm. is always sufficient. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I uh, just want to also just thank people who have been supporting the, the work in Uganda over this last few months, mm -hmm. well, years and months. But uh, recently, uh, Pastor James just back from Karamuja. There was uh, a famine there. You know, yeah. some of you have heard about in WhatsApp. Yeah. And uh, just a lot of different reasons for that. You know, high, high food prices, instability. Usual stuff, just a messed up world, you know, and it's, it's, it's affecting a lot of places in the in the third world. Yes. But uh praise God he went he went there and we were able to use some of the money that's been given to help relieve people for food. And uh well thanks for that, for the for the giving and but I want to encourage you as well, uh a new plan by God's grace, you know, to be able to travel out and uh the beginning of September. That's my intention and by God's grace that'll happen, you know, and uh, after three years it'll be it'll be strange being back out again, but it'll be good. If we can get it out make out it'll be good. So uh uh just wanna encourage you as well if you do feel the Lord leading you to uh, support that trip in any any way, everything will be greatly appreciated. You know, as I say people have been supporting the ongoing so I'm not putting any burden on anybody or any expectation but just if you do feel the Lord is speaking to your heart you know and you're uh, it'll certainly be put to good use praise God yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's lots, lots of needs there and we thank God for the grace to do these things yes. and uh, I'm going to read this morning from 1st Timothy chapter 6 I'm going to talk really about Paul's, Paul's uh, understanding and his teaching regarding money and material things. And he really just go through like a discourse here where he's advising Timothy. And he gives him some really uh, good advice. I don't know if I get through it all, but we'll see how we go. But I'll just read from chapter 6 and really most of this chapter. But it just he says, I'll just begin by... It says, let not as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honour. The name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that are believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any teach otherwise, and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about with questions and strives of words, wherefore cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputes of men, corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, and from such withdraw yourself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Therefore, having food and clothing, let us therewith be content. They that will, will to be rich fall into temptation and snare, into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction, and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which when some have coveted after they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life 
whereunto you are called on a, on a professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give ye charge in the sight of God, who quickens all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that ye keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in his times he has he shall show who is the blessed and only pontitate, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Who only hath their immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, which no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honour and power everlasting. Amen. And charge them that are rich in this world to be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. They may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to your trust about profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning their faith. Grace be unto you. Grace be unto you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank God for his word. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let me just thank you, Father, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. For your word, Lord. We thank you for the lessons, Lord, that are found in your word, Lord. And we just pray as we just, uh, just briefly, Lord, just look at it, meditate upon it. Help us, Lord, just to be encouraged, be instructed, and just, uh, just be edified by it, Lord. We just thank you for the grace, Lord, just to, to fellowship this morning in your word. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, Paul again starts off by talking about slaves and masters. Well, people, you know, back in the Bible times, there was a, there was a lot of slavery. It wasn't, I don't think, ever God's will that that would be the case, but and men are rose up in history and have dealt with that. But one thing that the, the Bible doesn't really focus on, it, but the Bible focuses on if you are a slave, be content. Serve your master. And if you are a master, then treat your slaves with uh, honour and respect. That was always the biblical uh, emphasis. And uh, in reality, that's, you know, I mean, I believe my situations were, although it's not ideal, that if, 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 if there's a good relationship, it can work well for both parties, you know. And, but that's, uh, that's not the main thrust I really want to cover. I want to really want to get... Uh, down to verse 3 where he talks about uh, the wholesome words of Christ he says that there's there's just a watch for people who teach not the wholesome words of Christ or the doctrine which is according to godliness you see the gospel the word of God should always lead to godly actions Jesus says you will know them by their fruit you know, and the word of God is pure it is peaceable and it brings forth those fruits of righteousness. But these false teachers, they say they're proud, they don't know anything, they have their, their questioning, they have strife of words, they have railings, evil surmisings, for first disputings, and they're destitute of the truth. And one of the things they were teaching was this idea that, that gain is godliness. Paul said to Timothy, no, to withdraw from that idea that having gain somehow is godly. And that takes you to me around today as well, you know, this idea that if you're a child of God, you're a child of the king, you really should be living like a king. You should be, you know, at the top of the, you know, the highest of the, the top of the ladder. You should not just be working in the corporation, you should be actually owning it, running it, you know. Or if you're 
you know, you should be driving the best, living in the best. <coughs> Everything should be just like a reflection of your royalty. And if you're not, if you're kind of like just getting by or you're living a more modest life, you're somehow missing out on God's best. You know, and that's what I, I mean, I was exposed to that kind of idea, especially in the early years. And that's kind of the impression that you had, is that you were sort of like, uh, beneath you know, where God wanted you to be, you know. And uh, but you need to watch for that kind of idea, this idea that 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 having gain is spiritual, that having gain is a sign of God's favor. And there's extremes on both sides, and you know God does bless people, and people can you know be be servants of God and do well in, in, in their profession, do well in business, do well. And, I mean, there's people like that, and that's good. And God blesses them. God gives them that gift. So we're not uh, against that at all, but uh, it's just the idea that, that if you don't have this standard of life, you're somehow lacking, you're somehow falling short of the will of God. That's the problem. You know, And, and, and if you look at really... In Scripture, you'll find, especially in the New Testament, that that, that there wasn't this focus. You, know, you look at the, the the teachings of Jesus, the life of Jesus. You look at the apostles, Paul, uh, Peter, and their, their other apostles. You no, know, their focus was always on serving God, doing His works, uh, growing in Christ's character, and laying up treasures. In heaven, and for the most part, they they weren't men who had much affluence in this world. On the contrary, their life was uh, they, they had much trials and hardships, and tribulations and sufferings. Uh, even again, most of them actually died. They were, they were martyrs for their faith and for their service to God. So that was the. New Testament way, you know, and you just you just you just can never imagine Paul or Peter living in some kind of like a mansion on the Mediterranean or you know in, in Antioch or this was not the way they were thinking. I mean, I'm not saying everybody lives in a mansion and it's some kind of sin, but I'm just saying that in New Testament that was not their their mindset, you know, and uh, they were just kingdom oriented. They were uh, kingdom of God souls, people saved, delivered, healed, discipled. Uh, that's what they were living for. They were serving God, laying up treasure in heaven. And that's the way Paul is just saying to Timothy, you know, just withdraw from this uh, covetous mindset. This idea that gain is godly. A godliness or a sign of godliness. But he says in verse uh, 6 something very uh, profound. It's a short verse, but it's very profound. It says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm -hmm. That's a very profound uh, statement. Yeah. And if you have God in your life, and if you're content, in him, you really do have great gain. You're really actually, you're actually really wealthy. You're really rich. You know, just being content. As many people have discovered, you know, you find this even in uh, man's philosophies and some religions, and they're actually, it's based on a biblical idea that, uh, that when you're striving and trying to get more, trying to get more and more, it actually leads to unhappiness, to frustration, to uh, discontentment. But if you can just learn just to be, be content, Lord, I just thank you for what I have. Yeah. Thank you for your grace. Yeah. Thank you for your will. Thank you for what I have and just the life I have. And if you can learn just to be content in him, that is great richness. Mm -hmm. That is great uh, true uh, Prosperity, and from something is lost 
when we are discontent and always striving for more. Spending our whole lives trying to obtain, but never satisfied. And this is definitely, and it's one of the major, I think, tricks of Satan. And we can all fall for it. I myself, you know, I've, even recently I've, you know, I've fell for it to a certain degree, and you know, the Lord's been realigning me, you know. But uh, you can, uh, one of the temptations of, of Satan is that uh, it's this idea that you don't, that you're not, that the God is not sufficient, that you need more, that you need to strive to get more, to have more. And even people in ministry can, can have this here. And I've had it actually for years, this idea that, you know, you need to kind of like help God. You know, like you, 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 want, you need to be able to do more, you need to have more resources, you need to be able to go more places, and you need to be, then get involved in things and help God along and, you know, uh, raise money and get more money in. And a lot of it can be a distraction. Yes. You know, a lot of it can get you off your main focus. And people fall into it, including preachers. Uh, just uh, not being content with, with what they have. Not being content with their church. Not being content with their, their ministry. You know. Yes, it's been of course you need to minister to one person. That's a wonderful thing. That's right. You know, if you've only got a small congregation, I mean that's that's still a, a wonderful book of God. Don't compare yourself with other people. No, that's, God's got a calling for them. He's got a calling for you. Yeah. Don't compare yourself. Look to him. God's given you grace to be what he's called you to be. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to give you more, he'll give you more. Yeah, sure. He'll prepare you for it. Mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes if you, if you try to get the more, you make be ready for the more. <laughs> you know, you make that's this right. front drive you crazy. You know, you just, the Lord knows how to take you step by step. You know, and... Uh, don't be getting, you know, and that's what the Lord's been showing me lately, is don't be getting uh, distracted. Don't be looking to the things of the world, you know. I've always, I've always had an interest in things to do with business and enterprise and innovation. You know, and there's nothing wrong with interests, but you just have to be careful that things don't distract you from your your main call. <laughs> you know, and uh, stay focused on the Lord and on His calling. Praise God and uh, just to be content in Him. He is just beautiful. He's rich. He's just sufficient. When you're abiding with Him, you're in a blessed place. You are in a place of richness. And I've been there at times and you just feel like, you know, I I have more here, Lord, with you than I have than, than if I had all the all the tea in China, <laughs> all the wealth of the world. You know, I just just, just to be in your presence, just to be feasting and uh, receiving of your love and your peace and your joy and your life. You know, I uh, that's all I need. That's why I'm rich. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so this is a this is a reality. You know, and uh, and see, so we that's where that's where we get into temptation when we get our eyes when we're not satisfied. You know, when you think we need we need more, bigger and better. So Paul is saying here that true wealth is a quality of heart, not a quantity of ownership. It's a quality of soul, quality of heart, not a quantity of what we have. And I think that's why we're fine. And it's, 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 we find it throughout Scripture. In fact, it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, don't turn to it, but... Let me get on the screen. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4 verse 6 says, Better is a handful with quietness than both hands which are full with travail and vexation of spirit. You know, better is a handful with quietness than having both hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. You know, so uh, sometimes better, sometimes more is not always better. Right. You know, you often think, you know, having more of it, you just win the lottery, if I could just do this, if I could just have that, what he has, 
then I would be in, the light would be just uh, so wonderful. But more is not always necessarily better. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a quality of your spirit. It also says, uh, Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10, it says, uh, He that loves silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Or he that loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? The sleep of a labouring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer them to sleep. You know, so Paul is saying here, or, or Solomon writing Ecclesiastes, is saying here that uh, you know, the heart is set in the flame of the nation. The one that loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. And even when they, when they increase, they'll be worried because other things will eat them. Yeah. You'll have all kinds of, you're worrying about thievery, you're worrying about uh, inflation, you're worrying about this, the economy. There, there are things that will that can cause people to be concerned but you know it says it's, it's, but a man who just labors you know and just is content he can be uh, at rest and have an abundance of sleep you know so uh, it's, just, it's just important just to keep our eyes on God as our foundation amen, amen. My, I have a friend actually in work and he was just an example of this here about this you know he uh, he had invested in, in certain uh, drug companies during the pandemic and these companies like he he made a lot of money out of the investment and then he took this money that he invested and put it into another drug company but, this, but the, the investment in this one then went down so he basically lost all his money that he had gained from the other ones he said to me that uh, that he was uh, he couldn't sleep because of this. You know, it caused him a loss of sleep. This experience. You know, and that's just thinking. You know, and, and I've been through some of that myself. You know, just different things that I could share more. I'm not going to share much this morning, but I could share more another time. Just different things I've done, and you know, and that's the Lord's just been showing me. You know, this is not the way to go. It's causing you uh, trouble. In your heart, it's causing you like a lack of peace, concern, concern, and uh, that's where I am at the minute. You know, it's just taking me out of a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, God, you spoke loud and clear this morning. But uh, you know, I was thinking of myself, or even you know, lately, you know, you see the inflation worries and the people are losing billions or millions and Bitcoin and shares falling, and you know, and you get some guy. Out in Africa, and you know, he gets the chicken for his lunch or for his tea, and he's, he goes to sleep happy. You know, <laughs> got a chicken for for my tea. He just sits out on his porch, and he's got his family, and he's got his kids, and he's uh, he's happy. He's happy. You know, people there, are friends of mine, face, you know, in Uganda, and all he has is uh, he's got a got a wife and a handful of kids, <laughs> most of them. You know, and he's uh, he's a pastor. Loves the Lord. He goes to church on a bike, you know. Doesn't even have a car. Just goes to the church on a bicycle. And just preaches the gospel. Simple gospel. Loves souls. And uh, just content. You know, just simple but content. Amen. You know, and uh, then you see these people, these people in the world, they have all this stuff. And they're just out of their mind and worry and anxiety. And, Troubles, you know, and it just it just teaches you, like you know, the reality of these scriptures. Are, you know, and again, I'm not saying that God can't bless. I mean, the Bible does say in the Book of Proverbs that the blessing of God does make rich and not no sorrow. You know, so when you are blessed in God, you know, if you sit, if you keep your eyes on God and focus on God, yeah, you know, He can bless the work of your hands because mm -hmm. you're doing His work in His will, and because you're doing His will, it's not an it's not add any sorrow. Be, it'll be a blessing. Yes. A big mm -hmm. purse without holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. God's blessings are a big purse without holes. 
Yeah, it man. doesn't seep through quickly. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. When you're out of God's will, that's when then the things become a snare, become a hindrance. When you get your, your focus away from Him. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I'm not sure more as well, but I mean, I went through a period there just with this loss. Like, I haven't turned from God or turned away from God or anything, but you just. You getting involved in investments and things and they were sort of preoccupying my time and my life. You know, I wasn't spending I wasn't enjoying the word the same and getting the same time in the word and they were just sort of like taking over and you know, and uh and then I just felt the Lord was just saying to me, you know, you just gotta you're gonna have to change here, you know, you have to adjust. And he sort of started taking me out of it. You know, and I'm still having the effects of that, you know, I'm still going to be about Thank, I'm bit of a challenge at the minute, you know, just Pastor Ellen knows about it, but you know, I believe the God's going to take me through this, mm-hmm. this challenge mm-hmm. of the other ones, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. praise God, you know, he's, he's a faithful God. Mm-hmm. And uh, even as I stand here this morning, I just know that he is, uh, he is so faithful. He's, yeah. he's so graceful, yeah. you know. And uh, there's a work to be done, praise God, in the kingdom. And, uh, for myself and for all of us here and you know I just believe God will give us the grace yeah. to do that work. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. But he says here again, uh, praise God, he says here uh, verse 7, and probably this will be a two-parter I think, <laughs> he says, we brought nothing into this world and with a certain we shall carry nothing, nothing out. out. You know, and that's, uh, I might give you a joke again about the, the hearse, they've heard that one. <laughs> but uh, there, there's somebody, there's a story about, you know, this guy, he says, uh, a, a rich man who died, and I was asked, you know, how much did he leave? And the reply was, all of it. We <laughs> 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 you know, leave it all behind. Right. Well, leave. There's no baggage shack on the way to hell. No. We leave it all behind, mm-hmm. and uh, we only have it while we're here. Yeah, just keep it in. That's why the Bible talks about not so much ownership, but stewardship. Yes. We don't really own anything. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You know, if you're a farmer, you know God owns your cows. Praise God. You know, we don't own anything. You know, and God owns it, even our own lives. The rich man says, you know, I got I done well, all these goods, and I, I, I relaxed. I take it easy, my feet up. The Lord says, even at this very night, there's so much you require. And God owns it all. So we, we just have everything as a, as a steward. <coughs> We're stewards over uh, what God has uh, given us. Praise God. And... Uh, so we brought nothing in and we can bring nothing out. So it's so important then, and that's, that's why we shouldn't really, we shouldn't, if we have things, we should honour God with our things. We should be thinking about people who have less, thinking about the work of God, missions. Yes. You know, yes, there's, there's times when we need to save up and we need to look after ourselves and our families and all that. But we need to have this sort of mindset that everything we have in this world is temporal. Yes. When, 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 when we really see that, understand that, it, it will uh, adjust our mindset. And it's only, only have it for a season. That's why again it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 1. It says that there's an evil which I've seen under the sun, and it's common amongst men. A man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wants nothing, for his soul of all that he, for his soul has all that he desires. Yet God gives him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eats it. And this is vanity and an evil disease. He's saying here, Solomon's saying here, I've seen a situation where people have, they've, they've, they've all this wealth. All this laid up, but they, but they don't have the power to enjoy it and the joint benefit of it. 
just like that, that kind of parable. And I've seen people in my own life, you know, as well, who, you know, they've, they've even, they've, they've, they've died even before they reached retirement. You know, and uh, so that's, you know, so just, you know, there's a time for enjoying what you have. And uh, am I saying you shouldn't have retirement, you shouldn't have, have a pension, you should, no, I'm not saying that. And the Bible says that, you know, be like the aunt, the aunt gathers in the summer for the winter. It does say, you know, to live an inheritance for your children's children. There is those principles there as well, but it shouldn't be our main focus. You know, you shouldn't be really focusing on, you know, you know God will look after us. Yeah. You ought to, you know, enjoy the fruit of our labor yes, and be gracious and be generous and and uh, lay up treasure in heaven. That's right. Jesus says, you know, don't, don't lay up treasure on the earth where moths and uh, inflation and <laughs> all these things can break through and steal, you know, where thieves can come in. And, uh, but lay up, uh, he says, uh, lay up treasure in heaven. He says something very profound. He says, and where your treasure is, there your heart will be awesome. also. <laughs> yes. I've discovered this truth in life, you know, where I had a lot of my treasure in uh, investments, you know, and uh, I find that that's where your, your heart is in, in it. Your heart is there. You can't, you know, if you could just scan it like this, forget about it, that would be great. But, you know, your heart is where your treasure is. Yeah. And uh, it can create a lot of situations in your, in your mind, you know. So, uh, but uh, these words speak to me, you know, your treasure is where your heart is. Praise God. So, you know, lay up treasure in heaven. Have your heart on the things of God. Have your heart in the gospel, helping people, disabling people, and just you know, and have, your, have your treasure in those things, towards those things. That's, again, you know, there's a balance in this, of course, you know, we you know that anyway, but that's a, that should be our focus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it says here, and then Paul says to verse 8, if you have food and, and clothing, yeah. they're always be content. Yes. Be content with the basics. Mm-hmm. You've got food, you've got clothing, you've got a roof over your head, you're in comfort. You know, just be content with them things. You don't need to be having other things. You don't need to be comparing yourself and trying to get these things in life. Just be content with what uh, God has given us. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added on to you. Concerning what to eat, what to wear, concerning the things of life. God is able to feed the birds of the sky. How much more will he feed us who are his own beloved children? If God is able to clothe the, <coughs> the flower of the field, yeah. how much more will he clothe us you know, uh, so well? Even Solomon in all his glory was not a red like a lily in the field, he just said, but you know, so, you know, God is able to provide for us. God is able to look after us. There's not a, there's not a, God looks after every living thing, and how much more would he look after us, who are the pinnacle of his creation, who are the apple of his eye, who are his own beloved sons and daughters. Well, he, he loves us more than what we can ever even really come to understand. His thoughts are, are always towards us every day. The psalmist says, you know, your thoughts towards me are, are innumerable, are, are, are without number. You know, your thoughts of goodness, thoughts of kindness, thoughts of 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 of, of, of love. And he goes and we will spend all eternity just enjoying the exceeding richness of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. You know what? Well that's awesome, you know. If we can help us Lord just to see the wonder of who you are. Just to see the beauty and the, the excellency of your love. Praise God. Help us keep our focus, Lord, on that. Mm-hmm. Not on the things of the world, not on the problems. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. So, uh, hallelujah. I'm just 
So he says, having food and clothing therewith, be content. We'll just help it close down here. We'll pick up the rest of this here later. But he says, he says, verse 9, and they which will be rich fall into temptation and the snare. And the many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Those that crave to be rich will fall into temptation. They often compromise their ethics. Yeah. You'll find when you have that craving, you'll, you'll lie, you'll steal, you'll cheat. you turn from God, neglect your family. You just fall into this trap, this trap of being owned by your lust, owned by your obsession. And it'll lead to just uh, destruction and it'll drown, it drowns men in destruction and perdition which means spiritual ruin. Actually, it's interesting he uses the word perdition. Is that word was spoken of, of Judas? He was called the son of perdition. And he, he walked with the Lord. He, imagine walking with the Lord Jesus. You know, the, the Lord of life, you know, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, the, 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 the embodiment of life and wisdom and grace. The son of God. Yet he, he turned from, he, he didn't discern the beauty of Christ. Rather choosing rather to betray his Lord for thirty pieces of silver, for little for a candle of game that only lasts for a quick season. You know, he betrayed the Lord just for a little, just a wee bit of money. That's crazy. That's the that's the, that's the madness of the not of the carnal mind. You know. Yeah. And it cost him his life, it cost him his soul. You know. And, and he's God here is warning. Because he says in verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some have been coveted after, have swerved from the faith. And I've pierced the verse 3 with many sorrows. You know, he says here, this verse here is often misquoted. He says here, The love of money is the root of all evil. Not money necessarily itself, money is morally neutral. It's what you call a hey moral. It's, it's morally neutral. It's just a material thing. There's no intrinsic uh, goodness or evil in it. It's all about our relationship with it. The problem is with the human heart. Everything in life, everything God creates is good. You know, it's our hearts which are the problem. And uh, the money is not, there's no intrinsic evil with the money. In fact, money can be used for good things. We need money to live to have clothes and food and all these things. We need money to serve God, to do missions, to build hospitals, to build churches, orphanages, to feed the hungry. You know, all these things are done through money. The plane tickets are bought through money. You know, you go on and on. Money is it's not evil. It's 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 our it's the way we it's our attitude towards the money. It's the love of money which is the root of all evil. Or literally, it means here all kinds of evil. Not necessarily all evil, but all all kinds of evil. Money is like a root desire which leads to other kinds of evil. You know, all kinds of corruption and greed and all these things. Uh, it's the love of it. And some have coveted after and have even swerved from the faith. Just like Judas. And there's many people who are the same. They have a they began with the profession of Christ. They've had a relationship with God, and then they, they turn away. They get they get seduced by the appearance of money. By by they get deceived into thinking money is going to be better. It's going to be the answer. It's going to be the fulfillment. Jesus talked about the deceitfulness of riches. Lots of other things. You know, there's, a, there's a deceitfulness with riches where you think, oh, that, that, those, those things will make me happy, give me power, give me uh, privileges, give me abilities. There's a, there's, a deceit, there's a deception. And the deception also hides some of the moral and spiritual dangers which accompany, which accompany it. You know? you just put your eyes, look, your, look to God, let Him add to you as He feels. But praise God. Then once you go after the money, you, you'll turn your eyes from God. No man can serve two masters. You will love the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
troubles your whole heart, your whole soul, <coughs> and uh, you cannot get caught up in these things. That's right. Because it, it, it will pull you. Yeah. It, will, it will pull your soul. It will, it will seek your allegiance. That's right. It will seek your, your, your worship. We can bow down to physical idols, but you know, when you spend all your time, your energy, your thoughts, your feelings are, are engrossed in it, then it's, 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 it's pulling you in. It's, be, it's becoming your master. Mm-hmm. Sometimes slowly and subtly. And you, you, you see it's attract, attraction, it's a but you don't see it's yeah. danger. Mm-hmm. You know, better wind down. But there, there's an old story by a guy called uh, King, King Medias. He was an ancient yeah. myth. Yeah. Uh, time's gone, so I'm not even going to go into it. But he, basically, he, he wanted to have, he had a desire that everything that he touched would turn to gold. But, when he, but whenever it actually happened, he found that he was that it wasn't giving him the results that he wanted mm-hmm. because uh, you know his, his daughter came along and went to embrace him she turned to gold mm-hmm. he went to eat some food mm-hmm. and it turned to gold and he began to worry you know that everything everything turned to gold but this is not this is not just as good as they thought it was so then he, he desired that this thing this curse would be lifted off him and uh, I'll be sure. I'll share more about it the next time. But uh, praise God. It's uh, just be careful what you wish for sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. But final scripture this morning is, but you, a man of God, flee these things, but follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Yeah. That's that's the character of Christ. That's the true value in God's eyes. Praise God. Follow after these things. And follow after the beauty, the wisdom, the, the wealth of Christ. Being a man of faith, love, godliness, meekness, humility. Verse 12, just get it. This is definitely the last scripture. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Mm-hmm. Wherefore you are called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Because fight the good, use your energy in fighting the good fight of faith. Stay focused on me, fight the good fight of faith, and lay hold on that eternal life. You have professed it before others, now you get both hands and lay hold of it. Don't be distracted, don't look to the left. Or the right, guard your heart from right about through the issues of life. Look to me, lay a hold on eternal life, do the works that which are laying up a good foundation against that day <coughs> to come. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. I think we'll leave it there. I'll probably maybe come back to it next next time, but uh, we'll leave it there this morning. Thank you, Lord. So I just I don't want to rush rush through this, you know, from this type of time. And praise God. And, uh, we just uh, thank you, Father, this morning. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your word, which which instructs us, Lord. It uh, corrects us. It, uh, it uh, admonishes us. And we just thank you, Father, for the grace to honour you, Lord, with our lives, lives, with our with our attitudes towards material things. Just help us, Lord, just to learn these lessons, Lord. And just help us, Lord, just to be just so satisfied and so content in you. You are our sufficiency for all things. You are our more not enough. We just content ourselves with the beauty, with the loveliness, with the wonder of who you are. We worship you, Lord. We esteem you, Lord. We we love you. We glorify you. And we just uh, look to you, Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith. We just thank you for your grace upon our lives, Lord. And for the strength, Lord, just to to go forward, Lord, 
with boldness and with, and, with, and with strength of faith, Lord, doing great exploits in your name, for your glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. Praise God.